We are just about a month away from fall camp. And of course, uh, SEC media days before that, Brent Venables hitting the podium as a member of the SEC for the first time in Dallas. We got two plane sports here to check on OU. Guys, how are we doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah great, great. We're excited to be here. Absolutely. Good to have you on board with us. And uh, well, let's start with recruiting. June and July are all about recruiting targets, who's going to commit, what the announcement dates are, how effective were the camps, the official visits, and so forth. So uh, there's a number of guys that have come into the fold here in just the last, let's say, week to 10 days, like C.J. Nixon, top 10 defense end, uh, edge rusher, uh, number one rated player of the state of Oklahoma, uh, Cortez Mills, a top wide receiver out of Florida, Omarion Robinson, a safety, and also uh, Darius Afalaba. Uh, the interior offensive lineman out of Utah. So just your thoughts about uh, where OU stands in the recruiting process and if you're happy about uh, the early returns. Um, I would say this is probably one of the more relaxed recruiting seasons Oklahoma's had under Brent Venables. Um, and by relaxed, I mean for the past three cycles with him as the as the head man. Usually around this time is when Sooner fans that really follow recruiting or maybe moderately follow recruiting start sounding the alarm. Because if you look at Oklahoma's class over the last three years with Brett Venables, they usually don't really pick up a lot of commitments until about end of July, early August. <clears throat> After guys have gotten a lot more of their official visits done, Oklahoma this time came into the summer with double digit commitments i want to say close to 15 by the time they were even at their first big recruiting event and i if i recall correctly we're at 20 or 21 so this recruiting class comparing this one to the others has been relatively uh stress-free now there's still plenty of uh recruits out there that oklahoma is trying to go after mainly offensive linemen and uh, Andrew Babaloa, I think is how <clears throat> his last name is pronounced. Uh, talk a lot of Kansas. Uh, Ty Haywood um, and Michael Fasusi are the three big names that Oklahoma is still going after. But you've got, for out, outside of those three, there's, there's very, I guess, few guys that Oklahoma fans are probably really looking at when it comes to who else is going to round out this class. I mean, yeah, I kind of, I, I agree with everything you said there. This is, we're sitting at 21 in the class right now. It's usually, you know, 14, 15 around this, this time of year. And like you said, people start to uh, even doubt the recruiting ability of Coach Venables or Coach Bates or whoever's on staff. And, uh, you know, we always kind of try to tell them to pump the brakes. It's going to happen. It's going to fall into place. This year, like you said, we're kind of just ahead of the curve. Um, yeah, I mean, so far I'm, I'm liking everything that, that the class is looking like. We're sitting top 10. Um, you know, we're number eight right now. There's There's a lot of... It's a lot of young players, a lot of a, a lot of players that I think can be playmakers down the line here. Is this a different approach than it was a few years ago because of Brent Venables and a different approach uh, geographically because of the SEC? Potentially. I think that they're more willing to accept kids, rec kids commitments earlier on. Um, and kids are also committing earlier on to Oklahoma. Uh, for the first couple of years, it was – pretty known expectation uh, amongst Oklahoma fans and probably just general recruiting fans that Oklahoma wasn't going to accept the commitment of a player unless they were 100% committed, meaning they were not planning on taking really any visits, uh, unofficial or official to any other schools. Um, I think players are now just buying into that idea a little bit early on. Kevin Sperry, the quarterback in this 2025 class has been committed for over a year now uh they already have their 2026 um quarterback they have a few guys in the 2026 class actually and when you look back to 2023 like that's not really something that venables was really trying to to do and getting guys on on board super early in the into their uh, recruiting class and their their recruiting process i think the biggest recruiting difference i've seen from from BV and, and uh, Coach Riley is, you know, the the quarterback position where, you know, with with Lincoln, it was one every other year. And uh, here, you know, we've got a quarterback in the 2024 class and Mike Hawkins. We got Kevin Sperry in 2025 and Jaden O'Neill already committed in 2026. So it, it's a 
we're taking the best we can get every every year. There's no um, there's no waiting game around for you know we're not we're not taking years off for certain positions. Um, but yeah, again, just the 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 earlier commitments and kind of trying to get them to shut it down whenever they do commit. And it it doesn't work all the time, but I feel like for the most part, you know, once these guys commit, they're they're there for the long haul. Even though uh, NIL is above board now, uh, there is still such a veiled mystery to some of it in regards to how much are these guys making, um, how much of their decisions, which we will never know this answer, how much of their decisions are tied to NIL uh, versus how much have to do with loyalty to program or relationships with the coaching staff or NFL development, which I would think is still prominent. And then of course, wanting to win championships because it doesn't appear as though NIL it's while it's impacted recruiting in so many different ways. If you look at the rankings, it seems to be a pretty direct transition from the way things were going before NIL versus the way they're, they're playing out right now. And then there's those programs that we hear a lot about, whether it's Ohio State or Oregon, that seem to be out in front of it in regards to the kind of money that they're putting into it. But it's, again, a bit of a mystery concerning a lot of other top flight programs. So based on your intel, where do you feel Oklahoma is positioned at this point in NIL and are they competing at a high level? Oklahoma's definitely competing at a high level. I think over the last couple of years, they've evolved their approach. Um, the biggest collective was the Crimson and Cream um, collective for Oklahoma, but they recently launched, I believe it's called o One Oklahoma, um, mm -hmm. which is more endorsed by the school, like you, even the, the university uh, Twitter pages, OE Football's Twitter pages, like they, they've been pushing it. They, they've made commercials for it, so they're definitely trying to get the word out there more for fans. I think they've got the donors. The donor side seems to be pretty locked in with making sure that you've got your big money people constantly donating as what they can as much as possible. Uh, now they're trying to focus more on like making sure there's a benefit for fans like, you know, us here talking about it that want so we want to donate and feel like we're getting something out of it rather than just here's 20 bucks hopefully it goes towards something that you know a player that we want or someone that something that's really going to benefit the program it's more like i think one of the perks for one of the lower level of donations that they have with this new collective is like 25 dollars. i want to say don't quote me on the specific number but you get access to like exclusive content with players. Uh, so like exclusive interviews with, with some of these players. And that's something that in the past wasn't happening. It was, here's my donation. And they, I think they might've gotten something every now and again, but this is a little bit more constant. People are getting something, a return on their, on their dollars. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would think for that, um, uh, initiative to be, uh, successful long term that there would have to be some type of tangible exchange uh, beyond the trust of simply uh, we're running the best football program we can and we need your help and you know the 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 rules have changed therefore we we just need donations and you're throwing yeah your 20 bucks into this ocean of money just having no idea and then when it is discovered that certain schools programs i don't know exactly who they are but are actually paying for uh, recruits to visit and transfer portal guys to visit campus. And then they may not even land them. So that's wasted money. When people hear things like that, they're, they're going to be, um, you know, deterred from, from uh, committing to some kind of financial obligation, certainly. But uh, yeah, when, when you can deliver on exclusive content and some type of people, people like to feel that they're part of the inner circle. So if you can provide, that uh, behind the wall look, then then uh, you can get some buy-in for sure.